Hello YouTube. I just completed my part in what proved to be a very disturbing conversation. So, to cleanse myself, I will enter this video into my Get Real series. There is too much to be said, and I will not hold my tongue. Here, I select not to take responsibility for your reaction to my commentary. Here, I will not self-censor. You are encouraged to leave your respectfully presented dissent or exercise your right to change the channel. Likewise, contrary to popular belief, I am allowed to offend you, but not from a state of malice or imprudence. I need to make a trip to the library and a few other places. So let's get the music started and we can engage in conversation. Some of you know that I am an anti-theist. As a matter of principle, most anti-theists I know do not celebrate Thanksgiving. However, I am not your run-of-the-mill non-believer. It appears many things revealed about history is false. This does not surprise me. Friedrich Nietzsche once said, The lie is a condition of life. Mark Twain stated, The very ink with which history is written is merely fluid prejudice. This said, we have come to understand Europeans, Dutch and French specifically, arrived in America not in 1620, as famously reported, but in 1614. We know these folks were not the pious people we were led to believe. We now know that they have been responsible for kidnapping Indians, maliciously infecting them with smallpox, and selling them into slavery. Just another day at the office, right? In 1621, the myth of Thanksgiving was born. I still remember the story I was told when I was a young boy, the great lie of the Great Communion, when, in reality, the colonists invited the chief of the Wampanoags to their first feast. The chief, in turn, invited many of his men, approximately 90 or so. Two years later, the English thought it would be a wonderful thing to symbolize their eternal friendship by inviting several tribes to a feast. The English offered drink and food, and mysteriously, 200 Indians dropped dead. They had been poisoned. If that was not gruesome enough, Thanksgiving during 1637 will do it. The Pequot tribe, reportedly 700 men, women, and children, had gathered for their annual green corn dance. The Dutch and English mercenaries on what is now Groton, Connecticut, capital G-R-O-T-O-N, in case I mispronounced that city's name. Well, at that location, their camp was surrounded, and they were butchered, shot, stabbed, and burned alive. All of them. Now, let's fast forward into the future. It was that crafty bastard, Abe Lincoln, that utilized his politician manipulations back in 1863. You see, he needed something to hold the country together. He needed something to spark a wave of patriotism. So, Thanksgiving was officially and nationally declared. Back then, two days were set aside to give thanks. Day one was to be a celebration for the August 6th victory at Gettysburg. The second day became the infamous Thursday in November. I would argue that we received our first national, multicultural, multiracial lie when the popular art, which appropriately contained both Indians and pilgrims, had changed. The action within the scene had changed. You see, we got a good old dose of artistic propaganda with the likes of the 1914 creation by artist Jenny Brownscombe. That's capital B-R-O-W-N-S-C-O-M-B-E. The violent confrontations normally depicted changed to this vision of peace and brotherhood that we see today. 
you know, I can close my eyes and I can still see the despicable farce of racial harmony, pro-community, religious reverence, and tolerance. It is amazing what can happen when something is strategically placed by the media. This time, it was in Life magazine, which was used to deceive the public. It is funny, you know, it is funny how many white Americans I have met over the years believe every negative mentioning about blacks in the media. I guess they wanted to see it that way. They needed to see it that way. But we should have learned something from looking at certain things like Thanksgiving and how we can all be duped. Let's not kid ourselves. Because, you know, Thanksgiving Day is truly a reminder of murder, theft, relentless cultural assault, and genocide. So no, I really do not celebrate the day. I celebrate the lie regarding the supposed spirit of the day, if that makes any sense. I remember having big turnouts where my family gathered and laughed, fought, socialized, and shared sustenance with each other. These were great times. I miss them. This is what I hold dear when I meet this holiday head on. Not the ugliness that some deny as they dismiss it as revisionist history. My mom always reminded me we did not need holidays to show appreciation to each other. We just needed a spirit of gratitude. You see, we didn't need the cyclic hamster wheel many get on to propel themselves through the winter months. We just needed to appreciate our good fortune and to look beyond the trance of materialism. Yet, we all know there still will be, no doubt, churches that will continue to perpetuate the fairy tale versus the spirit of true brotherhood. We will, no doubt, be able to turn on the tell a lie and witness some preacher pontificating about the goodness of the pilgrims. Of course, conveniently omitting the barbaric, atrocious behavior some demonstrated. So we have options, people. We can put aside the ugliness and hopefully not be trapped by the holiday's lies. Yet take what can be thought of as good without feeding into the lie. I know it is easy to get weighted down with everyday concerns. I miss my mom and she died last year and it hurts not to be able to share this time with her because it was a special time for us and I will miss that as I miss her. I know how easy it is to let the ugliness of man suck the happiness out of us. Don't let it. Don't allow it. Please, if you are parents, do not lie to your children. Honor them by being truthful and teaching them about gratitude and encourage them to abandon entitlement. And no, I am not using right-wing code messages for casting aspersions on the unfortunate. I am not going to do the right-wing shuffle or the Republican neocon fascist twist and endlessly talk about Social Security and Medicare as if they were welfare giveaways to ambitious list people who refuse to take personal responsibility. Nor am I going to visit rhetoric revolving around corporate welfare subsidizing low wages. No, I am talking about entitlement that is not restricted by political parties or incorporated entities. Yet, if we dabble along this path, it may take one to a position of elitism within their mind or imagine privilege, normally requiring internal corruption. You see, contrary to popular belief, there are people who do not feel entitled or want others doing for them. They rather actually do for their brothers and sisters. 
Long ago, I realized that many within our capitalistic society suffers from a grand disconnect from actuality. This select group is incapable of feeling want to assist to assist those who genuinely struggle by no fault of their own. An unsettling amount of Americans do not see personal value in this action. Yet, when you look closely at them, it is all about me, me, me. They can't hide it. It's all about me, me, me. Many who do not need government intervention, meaning the wealthy, along with the well-to-do middle class, suffer from entitlement mentality. One side note, many libertarians and republicans I've had the honor to know basically made the argument that safety net programs, safety net programs, not the rebranded entitlement label, should be cut because a small percentage of people abuse them. Yet, this is exactly the same argument they rail against when people call for banning weapons. Do you see the hypocrisy? Indeed, we are plagued with an instant gratification, it is all about me society. We see it daily in the commercials. We see it daily on our streets. We see it in how people act, especially during the hideous Black Friday sales. Anyway, conservatives, not all of you, some of you, you don't get to use the responsible majority argument with one breath and then dismiss it with the next. Just like we can't pretend we are about building a better society and then feed constantly and with vigor, feed the me machine. We need to detox ourselves from the mass media and Hollywood poison. We need to divorce ourselves from the expectations that others have said that we are entitled to, whether that may be fame, fortune, or a variety of physical pleasures. Surely, if we continue along this path, it can do nothing but harm. It can do nothing but lead to psychosis and pathologies largely endemic to Western society. Well, I have made it to my destination. I hope what I've shared with you today matters. Think about it. Thank you for your time, and Happy Thanksgiving.